All right, guys, another episode here of the Gospel of Fire, and I am here with Gary Bishop. Gary Bishop, I looked at I looked at uh, at your website and and your stuff, and man, you are you are all about these courses and like and making people's lives better, right? Yeah, I, I would I would say that is uh, that is uh, unfucking your life, right? Is what right. you would say? Yes, right, absolutely. Um, I, I'm out to give people resources to make significant changes to the direction of their lives. Sometimes that's a long process. Sometimes it's a short process. But uh, ultimately, the, the aim is always the same, to empower people. Is it? Is it? Oh, I like that. That's my thing. So I, my thing is find your power. Uh, so, uh, yeah. man, uh, is it ever a short process? Because I, I, yeah. like, I feel like I'm, I'm still in the process. I don't know. Every, you know? Well, you can change the direction of your life in a heartbeat. True. Okay, I see what you're saying. Right. But but the work on oneself never ends. I mean, there's no point where you're sitting there, you know, in touch with the universe and, you know, all is well in your own little paradigm. No, there's always stuff to work on and things to unfold and things to understand. But it, but when when you're somebody who's out to live a great life or to do great things, that's the sort of stuff you might be interested in. Yeah, yeah. Um, where are you from? Originally, I'm from Glasgow, uh, Scotland, but I have this hybrid accent now. I'm kind of half, <laughs> half Scottish. Uh, that's funny. I, uh, I'm from New Jersey, and uh-huh. uh, in, in New Jersey, we, uh, the, the, the liquid that comes out of your tap, we call that water. Right. right? Exactly. Well, exactly, right. But if you go live in Texas, no one will have kind of word you're saying. I've lived in Colorado for 21 years now and I don't say water anymore. I say water. Like, right. uh, like I don't know what happened to me. All my New yeah. Jersey friends are like, yo asshole. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So how long ago did you come to the States? I came, I originally came to the States in 1994. Um, I used to be a musician. I had long hair and I, I played in a rock band, but it was, played. it was a brilliant life. I did it for a number of years. Okay. Um, but then, you know, my life went off in a different direction and I just followed the pathway to find myself right here. I'm sorry, did you say your wife or your life? No, my life. My life okay. went off in a different path. My okay. wife is still on the same All path. Right. Uh, We're still <laughs> walking it together. Um, what was that direction? What, what, what occurred? Um, well, in terms of like my music career, you know, I was in my early 30s, like 32. And I, and I really okay. thought, you know, I've been doing it for a long time. I've been a professional for a long time. And I, I, I was, you know, I wanted to just take my life in a, in a new pathway. I wanted to, I was interested in earning a living. And, you know, if you're a musician, you're not earning a living. <laughs> um, and so I, I, I followed that pathway. I, I was really complete with my music. There was nothing else I really wanted to say about it. I mean, I still play. But, um, and uh, so I went into construction and I followed that. And I built a nice business and did well with that. And, you know, as I was getting in my late 30s, I was seeing that, you know, I wasn't particularly self-expressed or fully happy. And that's when I started to do personal development work for myself. And right. which just exploded, just it got me into a world of something that I'd, it was like a, it was like a playground, like the ability to expand myself. And uh, here I am. Man, we have such a uh, similar path. So it, start, yeah. it started for me too with, with myself, like a, a mm-hmm. breakdown, right? Like, like holy right. shit, what the fuck's going on? Right. Now it's just this thing where I like, you, you can't get away from it. How I, right. you know? So yeah. Like that for you? Yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, like in that path, you know, I also found out that once I dealt with all of my own survival stuff, the natural thing to do is make a difference for other people. So when you're no longer surviving, you want to help. So right. that's really where I'm at. Explain that a little bit. What do you mean your own survival stuff? Well, you know, like we are wired to make it. Right. Right. And or actually I'll put this another way. We're wired for the struggle to make it. Um, we're not really wired to handle making it. Right. So that's a, it's, a, it's often a problem if you make it. Um, but I realized there was nowhere to get to. Right. There was just what, what, what's the big hurry? Like, what's the rush? Why am I, you know, and, and fundamentally because of the way we're wired you have to have a certain kind of dissatisfaction with the life you've got to struggle to make it. There has to be something about this life that's not it. So then I have to pursue some other life. And 
now I've, you know, thankfully been able to kind of put that to bed for myself. Like I'm, I'm somebody who's up to big things. I do big things, but that's not what my life's about. My life's not about how this turns out. My life is all about how the future influences the present, how I get to be here for what's here. And, um, yeah, it's a very different life for me now. And uh, one I'm very grateful for and thankful for. What do you mean by the future influences the present? Can you explain yeah. that? Yeah, most people, uh, your future is not influencing the present. It's out there like some kind of someday phenomenon. So people say, I'm going to make a lot of money. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to do that. It, it's not influencing the life you have, right? So people are aiming for a different life. Right? And again, that must leave you with that notion that this life ain't it. Um, but if you've ever, I mean, I think a good uh, explanation of it is if you've ever booked a vacation, the minute you book that vacation, the minute you book it, it actually impacts the present moment. You actually feel pretty good about going on vacation. I'm looking forward to it. Actually, the quality of your life actually feels a little better. And you're not even on vacation. You've only booked it. Right? You've only... So that's like a future that hasn't happened yet, but right. it's so powerful and so enticing. It's actually influencing the life you've got. I, and that's very much how I live my life. I live my life in that direction. And that doesn't bring up anxiety for you. Cause I know that that for me can bring up like uh, anxiety sometimes. Like if, if I'm so worried about the present, about the future. Sorry. Yeah. It can, yeah. And that's, you checked can, out about the yeah, present, can, you're gone. You're like, you're, you're just in la la land in your head. There is no sure. future. It's all in your brain. Right. It doesn't right. exist. It's not so real. How, how do you play with those two concepts? Right. Cause a lot of, cause there's a lot of people that suffer from anxiety. Right. Yeah. And like, for example, depression is the opposite, right? Depression is the past. You're, you're all fucked up about what already happened to you. Mm -hmm. You know? So how do you, how do you go about not, uh, not letting those two yeah. things creep in? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, whenever I get fucked up by anything, I know that it's about me. Okay. Like how I'm doing, how I think I should be doing compared to how I feel like I'm doing in this moment. Right. Um, anytime you're fucked up, it's about you. Right. And you're you not fucked up about, you know, and even people think, no, I do get fucked up about bigger things. No, you don't. You get fucked up by the threat of bigger things, which is about you. It's all about, yeah, yeah. Right. It's all about self and, and really not even self. It's more like just this kind of fucking machinery, the ego of, you know. Um, so it's a, it's, Anytime you're in that space of anxiety or depression, you're disconnected from your real life. You're actually not there for it. You're there for something else. You're there for, and, and people don't like it when I say it, but this is how it is. You're there to indulge your own default fucking brain patterns. And you're indulging them and you're dwelling in them and you're making them significant. And making things that significant that don't even exist, right? That are literally like as real as fucking Scooby-Doo. <laughs> But we live like it's real. Like my thoughts about my past are real. No, they're thoughts. You're having thoughts, but the reality is you are not your thoughts. And those simple things you can do, by the way, to break up those patterns, to be someone who's responsible for, yeah, I do kind of dwell on that from time to time, which is okay. But you have to be doing the work on yourself to break some of that up, to free yourself up, to take your life in directions that are more satisfying to you. Right. Have you? Have you ever had this deep problem before? Like with like, like when, like when you were coming from like, you know, your, your music career, which I'm sure like, you know, you wanted to be the next like Mick Jagger, right? Sure. Or, you know, or, yeah, you know, or, and then, and then you moved into construction, right? And then uh, you t went from construction to this, right? Like, so, so I know for me, like I was a professional athlete, right? Um, but you don't know my name, right? Okay. Right. Like you, right. You, you yeah. don't know. Nobody yeah. knows me. I'm, I'm not, right. Le, I'm not LeBron. So right. therefore like that can, that, that can fuck people up sometimes. Right. So did that, did that fuck you up at all? No, look, you, you're not. So at the time, no, it didn't fuck me up. And the, the reason why these big life changes for a lot of people don't fuck them up is because they think what's next is going to be better. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, sometimes you're, you're looking at what's next and you're thinking it's going to be worse. That fucks you up. Yeah, so me. Yeah. You're like, oh, this is going to be shit, right? So then you're fucked. Now, you're only ever fucked. Not, it's never reality that's screwing with you. It's how you thought this would go. That's what's right. screwing with you. Right, right. Right. It's not what, how it went. 
In fact, how it went, how you, your life went for a lot of people would be a fucking mind blowing success. Sure. Right. But not for you. Why? Because you had some image in your head that you used to kind of whatever, motivate yourself and get yourself going. But for you, that image wasn't so much an image. It was something you cashed all your chips in on. You didn't, it wasn't strictly for motivation. And so as time went on and you realize like, shit, that's not going to turn out for me. What you're, what you're then dealing with is the disappointment, the gap between what happened and what you thought would happen. You and mean, that's where people get fucked up. Yeah, you even hear people who become successful. Like I talked to one of my friends, uh, this guy, Rashad Evans, who, uh, sorry, my professional sport was MMA. I fought in the UFC, mm. right? And he, he became the champ, right? He, right. He, he becomes the champ. He takes the belt up to his hotel room where he's all alone. It's sitting on his bed and he has like this mini panic attack. He's like, fuck, what next? <laughs> right? That's, like, that's everybody who's ever done anything. Uh, right. Yeah. And like it just explained. And then and like he was never the same again. Never. Right. Well, look, look, it's like a person who gets a college degree. They spend all that time grinding at it. I'm going to do it. It's going to make things better. Da, 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 da. Then they get them to like, fuck. Now, why is that? Because, and I talk about this in all my books, actually. I, the thing that you think you're after isn't the thing you're after. The thing that you're after, somewhere in your head, you think that'll solve the problem of you. Like when I get there, I'll be better. And what he faced was he did it and it was still him. He was still that guy. He, he got trapped and like, fuck the struggle that I've been struggling against. I can't wriggle out of it by doing things. Right? Like, so, and that's for, this is why in Hollywood people go off the rails. Fucking politicians go off the rails, like ruin their lives. I can, you know, CEOs, people who are like accomplished talented, you know, are driven when you get to, and this is, I say this to people all the time. When you get to that day in the future, you will realize you're still fucked. <laughs> so you'd be better working on yourself right now and you can still go for those big things, but it's a whole other big thing. It's not something to solve you. It's actually something you're up to. It's like, this is what I'm up to in my life, but I'm doing the work with me such that I'm settled with, I'm okay with, I'm, I'm great with me. And, and sometimes when I say that, people who are kind of by default positive, they think they already are great with themselves. But, you know, 10 minutes with me, you'd see it's not quite the case. Uh, what do you mean 10 minutes with you? What do you what, – what Well, I don't, I don't do positivity. I think it's a crock of shit. Okay. Um, it's useless fucking exercise. Like, there's no okay. point in it. And, and sometimes, like, when my style, the way that I do things – people get confronted or they they'll even, you know, argue back if you like about positivity and, but some of the most, and, and, you know, some people are very open about it, but some it's very hard being positive all the time, actually, because sometimes there's areas of your life, you're just in complete fucking denial about it. You can't even bring yourself to it. You're just like, no, no, it'll work out and I'm happy. And, it, and then, you know, shit happens, you know, and you'll find a way to put a positive spin on it. Not always bad, but but often leaves you powerless to actually deal with what's going on in your life. So I'm always pointing to or shining a light on what doesn't work because that's where you'll get the juice. That's where you'll get the the magic. Like when you find when you actually come to terms with what doesn't work about you. Of course, the next step is after telling yourself the complete truth about that. The next step after that is well, what do I do with it? Now you're starting to develop. Now you're like, well, I'm clear about my own machinery and why it does what it does. And then here's the way that I'm going to start taking my life in a different direction. So you get good with the shit end of you. Is what you you're have saying. to. Yeah. You have to. Like, I, and I'm not saying something fucking new. Like Jung was saying this a long time ago. He's a okay. psychology guy. I'm not a psychology guy. But, but um, if you're not going to shine a light on the darkness, you're a fucking machine yeah your machine you're not connected yeah. to what's going on with yourself you're you're the paper thin i like to say 
so I mean, I have anxiety. It's just what the fuck it is. Yeah. Right, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to actually have you start saying that different. Well, okay. Go ahead. You don't have it. Where is it? It's not, where is it located? It's not like you have it. Like you get something in your fucking pocket. Right? Go ahead, tell me what I should say. Right. So the way to say it is from time to time, I experience anxiety. Got it. Right. Which is very fucking different. Cause it's not all the time. Right. Exactly. Right. So that's for sure. Right. right. But then there's this kind of, and some people say, no, no, it is all the time. Trust me. And there's it's plenty not. of times when it's just not there, it's right? It's not there. And there's yeah. times when it's there and you feel like you're stuck or you're frozen or you're trapped, right. right? I want you to get, there's a difference between you and this thing called anxiety. The thing anxiety can be put down to uh, basically three things, okay? So there's thoughts you're having. There's the physical experience of anxiety, which you could pinpoint. And you can actually locate it right down to the parts of your body like, of course. That's the experience that I associate with anxiety. And then there's the things you do. So there's the thoughts, the physical experience, and the things you do. All of that together, we're going to call that anxiety, right? I mean, we could call it furry feet if we wanted to. It doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> but we're calling it anxiety, right? Okay. <clears throat> now, what you're capturing in that moment for yourself when you think about it is an experience of yourself, right? Now, it's not... You, it's an experience you're having, which is different. 100%. Right? right. So what you got to start to get is you got to start kind of creating this little disconnect between you and that thing. You see, when people say, I have this, in reality, what they're saying is this thing has me. That's like saying I have brown eyes. Right. 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 So what you want to start to get is that experience. Now, and then I say to people, I want you to try something that you would never, ever try. And they would say, well, one, I'll say, practice being anxious. I'm like, no, I don't want to be oh, fucking anxious. Fuck off. <laughs> and I say, try it, though. Like, just try it out. Like, fucking sit in the bus and practice your anxiety. And you'll see that you can muster it up. You're like, oh, fuck, I am. I'm anxious right now. Okay, good. Right? Now, what people don't realize is if you're anxious, for instance, what makes it worse is trying to make it go away. Oh, so you, try, yeah, you yeah. try not to be anxious will make you anxious about being anxious. It's kind of like being depressed, but being depressed. Right. So I say to people, practice it. You'll see it's a body experience. The thoughts that all there. And the more you practice it, you'll realize, well, if I just brought that to the surface, that means me, I made that thing happen right there for myself. And I realized I don't have to make it go away. What I can actually start to get is there are certain things that I could do where I could function with it. Like I could break out of it a little, like take some steps and do some things that breaks up the pattern of the thoughts and or those kind of default feelings and or those default behaviors. Because there's very specific things you do when you're anxious. Of course. Right. Very specific. If you actually just took on a practice of, I'm not going to stop doing those things. I'm going to start doing something else when I experience that. I'm going to actually, from now on, what I'm going to do is X, Y, or Z. So my, you started practice that. my child, it's, it's very interesting what you're saying. So, uh, I, I would say that I do, I, I'm never going to say I have anxiety again. All right, good. But that's gone. Um, I can say, you can say, how about if you're currently having it, you can say I'm having anxiety right now. Correct. You yes. Could, no, I would, I would no, stick experience I'm experiencing it. I'm experiencing right. anxiety right now. Like it's part yeah. of my experience of being alive. Like you experience being fucking happy. Right. 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 You, but nobody ever says, Hey, I have happiness. Right. This is true. This is true. Right. I, so that word's gone. I, I, I love when I can take things right away because I'm going to, for me, uh, I, I, I experience mine pretty well. Like it's awful. And when yeah. it gets, when it, I just do, I go, okay, I know what to do when it gets awful. I go do this, which is just whatever the fuck I want to do other than sit there and dwell in right. it, you know? So for my kid, what I do is, you know, cause he gets it at nighttime. Like I, like a lot of people tend to do, right. Mm -hmm. So I make him do pushups and sit-ups. Like that's our right. routine. Right? What does that do? Just think about it for a moment. What does it do? Right. It, what it does is it gets him, it gets, uh, I like to explain to him and you tell me if I'm wrong here. <laughs> I like to explain to him that anxiety can just be energy. Okay. Right? It's, it's just an energy that your body and brain don't yeah. know what to do with. So let's use it. Let's, 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 let's get really good at pushups and sit-ups. Right. So that now we're focusing our mind on okay. pushups and sit-ups. The anxiety right. you're experiencing. Nothing's right. different. All right. What you're actually doing with him is getting yeah, present. Right. 
you're getting them out of his head. Right. You're getting them present. The task gets him something. present. Right. Right. It brings them into the current moment. Anxiety is just a brain fart. It puts you somewhere. It's like the and then you end up like stuck in it. You're like, ah, oh, how the fuck do I? So and all that's why I say like alter the behavior because your brain will, if you authentically shift gears and you do something, your brain will turn its attention to it. Now, if whatever you're turning your attention to, like push-ups or setups or something, right? Right. It's hard for anxiety to coexist with that. So it can't. Right. right? Your brain runs right. in threads of thought, right? So it's a single thread. It's not multiple threads of thought, right? So I think a good example, I read this in a book a long time ago, but I can't remember the fucking book right now. But anyway, um, like if you think of a song, your favorite song, you'll remember the line or the piece of music and you'll follow the string. You don't remember the whole thing like a flow. You don't remember like it doesn't come at you in one piece and you have the whole thing there in that moment. It's like the piece, the next piece, the piece, the piece, the piece, you know. So that's kind of how your thoughts work. So if you're, ha if you're stuck in this kind of typical thought of anxiety and, and they're very typical, yours will be typical to you. You'll, it'll be the, roughly the same thought, but it right, might right. be a different situation, be roughly the same thought. It'll, it'll, it's starting to run its course. So when you say, well, let's do setups, I know you're actually telling your body to take a different course, which means it can't have the two of them going at the same time. So you have to be present to what you're doing. So anything like anxiety, depression, those are very, very, very fucking challenging things for people to deal with. But if you can find little ways to break some of that up for yourself, right? It's not about being a fucking champion and I defeated it or some bullshit. It's literally like, hey, how can I break that up a bit for myself such that I might take myself off in a different direction? Little actions, little things you're passionate about, little things you like, you typically like to do, or that you you might not even like to do it, but you know, given where you're at right now, you could probably do it. Right, That'll right. get you out of that cycle. <laughs> so for me, uh, it's funny what you're saying here, uh, because you can't have two thoughts at the same time, right? Right. But you know, uh, and for me, mine, mine revolves around sleep. I've talked about it a lot. And, and what I do is, is I go the exact opposite. Like mm -hmm. when, I have, and when I have insomnia or whatever, and then I start yeah. to get anxious about my insomnia, it starts to, and I feel the anxiety come. I yeah. go, okay. And like literally I, every night I get in bed and I'm like, the plan is to stay awake. Right. Like, yeah. Right. So like, it's, yeah. I, I don't even go a little off. I go all the way off to the other. Yeah, the but other it's other interrupting end. that cycle. Right. Like you're having another thought now. Yep. Right. So there I am. I call it interrupting the drift. I say to people, you interrupt the drift of your life, but you start by interrupting the drift of your automatic thoughts, your automatic right. ways of being and acting. But you can only interrupt something that you see. You have to right. start by seeing it. Like, what seeing. does it do? That's why I say to people, when you're there, when you're in that fucking moment, that moment of anxiety or whatever the thing is, when you're in it, Write it down. What do you say to yourself? Write it fucking down. And write down what it feels like. And write down what you typically do. And right there in that snapshot, you've got like, shit, that's my default. Not shit right there. That's what I do. And you, once you've written that down, you can identify that as what that is. See, most people, when they experience anxiety or depression or something, they try and change their life. Right? They're like, oh, quit my fucking job. I'm anxious. Midlife crisis. Right, right. Or whatever I've got going on, right? Right, right. So I'm trying to change my life. What you don't realize is you're not dealing with the thing. You're, what you're dealing with, what you, you should be dealing with the experience, not the situation. I mean, you might change your job. That's fucking fine. But, sure. but not because of something you're experiencing. You want to be masterful with your experiences. How do I be masterful with my experiences? I learn how to interact and live my life. When they're there, when they're not there, I actually learn how to go beyond what comes up for me, what gets triggered. And when you're somebody who can go beyond what you get triggered by, now you're starting to live a fucking interesting life. You're not just, you know, a robot. You have possibility. Right, for sure. Your experiences can't define you. No, and, and you yeah. can't deny them either. It's absurd. It's fucking stupid. It's like people trying to find love. You don't find love. You've fucking express it right comes out your mouth and your actions and you you bring it to the table people are looking for it like what do you you know what i mean it's a it's a it's like looking for air 
Good like, luck what are you that. doing? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, good luck. If you try to fall in love, good luck, right? Yeah. Um, man, how this is, uh, this is so interesting. Let me ask you a question. Um, and I'm, I'm going to shift and maybe we'll get back to it here. But you, like, you, you've been doing this for a long time and, and like, you obviously really understand this issue. Um, you had no clue who I was right like why no. why would why would you do my podcast why would you come on here and and like what's what's the reasoning behind it because like look i'm sure like i i went to your site right you've done a lot you've been, you're very accomplished you've done a lot of things and uh I've, I've been asking everyone this question i'm not rogan i'm not tim ferris i'm not you know yeah. i'm not any of these special like i wouldn't say special i don't like that word yeah. i'm not any of these huge things i'm not gonna blow up your platform right no, I mean, ultimately, my whole life is about making a difference for people. I'll do it in little ways. I'll do it in big ways. But it's, I'll do it at the fucking supermarket. Right. But, you know, I'm out, I'm out to make a difference, authentically make a difference in people's lives. I'm not out to fucking sell books. Sure. I sell, I've sold fucking millions of books. That's not, I don't do it to sell books. I do it because I, I, when, I, when I'm in the closing moments of my life, I want to make sure it was fucking worthwhile. And I'm the only one that can determine that. Right. You know, I get, I get stuff all the time. I get offers all the time for me to do this thing and that thing. And it's all, most of it's bullshit. Most of it's just scams to make money. I, I don't, what's the fucking point of that? I need to go to sleep at night and be, and know myself as someone. And I, I don't you know, know, I don't know how people do it, man. Oh yeah. And it's not, by the way, one of the things that I want people to get is it's not, it's not like I'm fucking noble or something. I mean, I'm doing it for myself. I'm doing it. <laughs> Because I want, I want to make a difference, right? I'm not it makes like you oh, feel better. Let me lay the fucking hands on you or something. No, right. I'm doing it for myself. I get joy, I get satisfaction, I get peace of mind out of knowing somebody got fucked out of something that I said. And that makes me a better man, a better person, a better father, a better husband, a better. You know, it's it's you know, I'm out to make a fucking difference. So. Coming on your show for me is another opportunity for me to make a difference on this fucking Thursday. You know, like it's Thursday, make a difference day. Friday, make a difference day. Saturday, make a difference day. Uh, I've got an event coming up in Edmonton, Canada in March, March 3rd or 5th or something with Arnold Schwarzenegger. There'll be like 10, 12,000 people there. Great. Awesome. I'll do that. But like I said, I'll go hang out with three people and make a difference with them. It's so powerful, right? Yeah. Like, I, I, I hope you feel just, just in the way that I'm going to use the word anymore. Because I pretty much have my anxiety, like my experience of anxiety. I have it under control. Like, okay. it comes, it goes. Like, I suffer just like every, like, you know, any, any yeah. anxious person. When you're in it, you're in it. When you're but, out of it, you're out of it. But it doesn't fuck with me. Right? Like, I'm like, oh, there you are. Hi, motherfucker. Let's go. Right. right. But in that moment, you're creating a distance between you and that thing. Right. But what I'm going to say is what you did for me today already at, you know, I don't know, it's, it's you know, eight o'clock in the morning for me, right. you know, 830 is, is like, I, I'll never say I have it again. <laughs> yeah. And I'll never, and I'll never tell my, I'll, I'm not going to let my kid say he is having it currently again. Right. Like, oh, it's an experience, bud. And we yeah. know experiences come and go. So right. like, you've probably helped my kid in a way that is amazing for me well so. people don't realize like the significant thank you and i got that and it, but people don't yeah. realize the significance of language there's a massive difference between having something and experience something like i don't even have colds <laughs> i don't i fucking experience colds yeah yeah right? you're right. an experience i'm having like my yeah. nose is doing shit my you know i don't have it like you know it's not and, and people say it like it's a fucking possession or something it's not it's important to create the distinction between you and what you are experiencing. Because when it's the difference between you and what you are experiencing, you'll get that you are whole and complete. There's nothing to fix or change. You are perfect. And you experience anxiety. Man, I'm re have you ever read The Four Agreements? No, I haven't. I've, I, but I've seen memes. <laughs> right. So the very, so it's it's what you're talking about right here. The very first agreement that you need to make is to be impeccable with your word. Right. And and I've been and what you're talking about is using the right word. 
Yeah, you like impeccable that, because right. you aren't it. You aren't it. You are you. you like, like, like taking that and saying, this is the experience. This is not me. Is, right. And some people would call that this foo foo hippy dippy positivity shit. And I and how how do you get away from those people? Because I agree with you. What do you say? Yeah. Well, that? well, you know, try it for your fucking self. No, I'm not. And by the way, if, if people want to say I have anxiety, go ahead. You'll make it worse. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm done with it. It's do, over. <laughs> right. What you'll be trying to do is somehow make it go away, and you and you relate to yourself like you got a fucking problem or something. It's not a problem to have anxiety, like the way you, you would say it. It's a problem when anxiety has you. And you got to keep creating that gap between you and this experience you're having. And even if you say, this is the experience I'm having, it, it, you could say that when you're angry. Like, that's me, and I'm experiencing fucking anger right now, right? I'm experiencing being angry. This is real for me, right? Right, right. It doesn't diminish it. It doesn't, like, you know somehow cheapen your experience but it starts to make it like okay like i'm a human being a big part of being a human being is my experience of being alive so let me i i, I think i fucked up my question a little bit um some people would say that this is some hippy dippy like the what you're explaining is some hippy dippy positivity shit yeah oh i'm perfect oh i'm just experiencing this like yeah. and i i don't agree with them yeah, but, how, but but rearrange that. Like, how do you, how do you get like you know people that are like, oh fuck yeah, just be a man, right? Like, yeah, I mean, but but they're they're just pretending they're not stuck, right? Like <laughs> like and they are. It's just a fucking fake. Pre you've turned into a cartoon character. You fuck what? Right. You know what I mean? It's like you've just turned into a cartoon character. You're like a caricature. You know, you you're not even a real fucking you anymore. You've built these things that you do to try and, and try and manipulate your own experiences of being alive. So what I'm saying isn't anything new. It's certainly not happy dippy. You back into some of the greatest philosophers of our times, you'll find them saying a lot of stuff about the human condition. What is it to be a human being? What is it? If you take away all the persona, all of the bravado, all of the positivity, all of the drivenness, Take it all away. What is it to be a human being? Well, you're a set of experiences that are very definitive ones that you experience frequently. You experience yourself as a something, right? So you experience yourself as a something and you might even, and you talk the way that someone would talk who experiences those things as a something. No one really ever questions like, how the fuck did I end up with this persona? Most people are like, well, it's genetics or some fucking, you know, personality test I've done, right? But, but you are a, you're a kind of set way. Now, you've got kids, or you're at least a kid, right? I have two. Yeah, two boys. You've got two children, right? Okay. But you remember when your children were really young? Of course. They weren't, they weren't really set. They were kind of like lots of ways. You know, they were like for you to be this way and then this way and then it can be that way and that way and they can be upset and doing all like this and that. As time goes on, as they get older, you'll notice they're getting a little more set, a little we more definable. I mean, we are prone to some certain things though, right? Like genetically how we're wired. Sure, you're prone to, but that doesn't mean you will. You know, that's like saying you're prone to tripping over a stair. That's fucking right. You are, but <laughs> you don't a lot. True, <laughs> you know? true. Right. So it's like, uh, yeah, it's, you're, you are, you're de definitely genetically dispositioned in a certain direction. Right. But, but it's not fate. It's not like, well, I'm fucked. Right. There are, there are some diseases of course that people get and conditions that they genetically, yeah, that's right. And that's your genes and that's the fucking luck of the lottery. Right. Um, but there's a lot of stuff behaviorally, personality-wise. No. No, you actually, even as an adult, you have a say in it. You have a real say in it, actually. But the question is, and I ask this people this all the time, if you're dealing with anxiety, if you're dealing with worry, depression, anger, right? Like a, a many, many people deal with anger. Oh, yeah. If you're dealing with that, are you willing to be responsible for it? Are you willing to do the work, to own it, to start to coach yourself and train yourself to develop yourself as a human being such that you're no longer or certainly not run by it the way you once were, 
I want people to get you're a lot fucking smarter than you think you are. You're a lot more capable than you think you are. You're a lot more powerful than you think you are. And but if you start getting your attention on some of this stuff, you, you'll see it for yourself. I'm not just fucking saying it like, you know, I'm saying it like, no, this is real for you. You can make real and significant change in your life. It's available. And it's, you don't have to join some fucking $2,000 a month mastermind club to do it either. It's right in front of you. Right. It's there. It's out there. Fucking Google is your friend. Yeah. It's right in front of you. Yeah. It's so amazing the message you're putting out because so many people, um, I'm in the martial arts industry. Yeah. You know, and we are, we're about to put on our first, put out in a couple of weeks here, our first digital course is going to come out. Right. And we're going to make eight of them on how to run your martial arts school because we have seven successful schools Good. and we do no high pressure sales. We do none of this. Like, uh, you come like, like when people say, give me your sales pitch, my sales pitch is, and I, I'm not the sale. I, I'm not the front desk person, right? Yeah. Our sales pitch is super simple. Look, man, you're going to get a trial month. It's cheaper than the regular membership, but we are up front. The regular membership is this. You're going to get a trial month Yeah. in the trial month. If you don't like it, if you tell us we suck and somebody else is better, we give you all of your money back. Yeah. Right here. Take it. I don't want it. Yeah. I don't fucking want it. You're yeah. not going to sign a contract. You're not going to do shit. You're just going to come. And within any time you want to cancel within 30 days, you can cancel. Right. Right. You can fucking cancel. So, I, I, so many people in the martial arts industry don't do this. Right. Sign contracts. Sale, sale, sale. Right now, right now, right now. And but that's all fear. It's all fear. Yeah, man. It's all fear. It's, 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 it's all fear. Look, there's, there's almost 8 billion people on the planet. Yeah. And you're building a business model to try and keep what? 200, 300, 4,000, 10,000? Sure, sure, whatever. Who there's cares? 8 billion fucking people. I don't, you know, I, I, I used to coach people. I used to have a very, um, very busy coach in business where I coach people on their mindset and their, how they view life and how they handle life. And if somebody says to me, I don't want to be coached by you, I'd be like, okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. Exactly. There's no like, oh, well, you know, you're under, why? I got a fucking waiting list of people who want to be here. And I've got a waiting list because I'm good. I don't have to lock you in anything. I'm fucking good. People want to work with me. So I don't, there's no need for me to lock you into anything. It's what you're just saying too about what well, I was about the, the people doing what you're doing. Right. Oh, here's a two thousand. Fuck you and your two thousand dollar mastermind course. The fuck you out could, of look, here. Right? Look, you could. I, I did three courses on creative life a couple of years ago. If you wait for the sale, you can probably get a creative life course for twenty nine bucks. You'll get three and a half hours with me and workbooks, and you watch me coaching people, and you work your way through the questions, all on different things. Or you can buy one of my books for 12 or 13 bucks, or you can do the audio book for 20 bucks. Right, right. You know, and I, I'm not, people get fucked up. I had a call last night with my agents and, you know, we are, we're in the middle of negotiating a really great thing. It could be amazing. And I said to the people who were there, I'm like, look, you guys, this will probably make money. But if you're in this for making money, I'm not doing it. You got to be in this for why I'm in this. I'm in this to make a fucking difference. What I make is what I make, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to waste my fucking time manipulating what I do to fill my bank account. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't. That's the opposite. This is where people get all fucked up. Get clear about who you are, what you're doing, what you stand for and deliver that. People are either going to get engaged with that or not. Either way, it's okay. And, and people are going to, if, if you're really good at it, people are going to get engaged. There's, there's no other, right? You know? Yeah. <laughs> there's like a, like and too often, by the way, in these kind of scenarios, it's like people are manipulating themselves to see what they can get out of others. No core values. I, I don't. I manipulate me to see what I can give you. What can I give you? What can I provide for you? Like I'm here to be of service to you, right? Like what can I provide? And you'll take it or you won't take it. It's okay, but it's not going to stop me or diminish what I'm doing. And I'm, and I'm not going to do something because it'll 
increase my bank balance, I will not do it. Yeah, once you start doing things for money, right? You start to... You, you're a sellout. You're, you're a fucking I'm, sellout. And the just, problem is... Just sell drugs and sex, right? right? Well, the thing is, though, you know it. You know it. And you can live in... The, you can be like, no, no, really, this is... But in your heart of hearts, when you hit your fucking head in the pillow at night, you're like, this is not who the fuck I am. And that's a horrible life. When I first started uh, in my... Because I used to be a senior program director. I traveled all over the world for this really big personal development company. When I went out on my own, the the people who are in the marketplace, as I like to call them, the blue blazer and chino crowd, that's who my marketing people were telling me, like, this is what you want to join in with. And I'm like, I can't fucking do that. I'm like, I, I, you're showing me Ario Speedwagon. I'm the fucking Sex Pistols. <laughs> so they so they had to like they had to really like they had to like come up with something because there was nothing no one out there doing what i was doing the way i was doing it nobody was doing not in the personal development space maybe in some other spaces but not in that space it was all fucking unicorns and tell yourself you're a tiger you know um but i would you know i, I, I want to get down in the dirt with people i want to fucking tell them some truths and I realized at the time, like the, the branding people I was working with at the time were like, and that's a big risk. And I'm like, no, the big fucking risk if I, is if I put on that fucking blue blazer and it works because now I've got to live that way. And I can't live that way. That's not me. Right. I'd much rather fucking just crash and burn with what I thought than crash and burn or, or sorry, succeed with what you thought. Because that would be a much fucking worse fate. My bank balance would be full, but I would be desperately unhappy. You would drink and you would do drugs. That'd be fucking drugs. brutal because you're, you're somebody you... Uh, and, and that's why it's important. That's, uh, a lot of things you hear you talk these days, or, you know, people talk about authenticity and they think it's the same as speaking your mind. That is not authenticity. Authenticity is being straight with yourself. It's actually telling yourself the truth. Most people, by the way, if you ask them and you get to the heart of it, they know what to do. They know what they should do. But they've spent so fucking long arguing with themselves about it, justifying themselves about it, excusing themselves about it, that they get stuck. You know the truth. Step into the truth. It'll guide you. You might not always get it right. You might not always, it might not always turn out, you know, like fucking pancakes and fucking, you know, hot syrup on a Sunday morning. But you know what? your life will go in a, in a much more true and authentic direction and you'll be much more empowered to handle it because it's you and your life and your choices and what you've made yourself about. Man, what you're just saying there, they, they, they people know what to do. Uh, I, uh, I, I have, I'm not religious. It doesn't sound like you're very religious either. Um, but I'm um, spiritual. I believe in things, you know, yeah. but I read, I, I like to say, and I, but I like to tie things to religion. You know, mm -hmm. like religious tech, you know, so like my, I say my old Testament is this book called the untethered soul mm -hmm. you know, and what you were just explaining, like, we know what to do. He gives his example. He's like, man, like what, like you get a, a you're walking through the woods and you get a sticker, like a, a thorn stuck in your arm. We know what to do. You flick that fucker off. Done. It's gone. It hurt for a second. And now you're gone and you're about your day, right? You're moving a different direction. Yeah. He's like, but what most of us do with our life is that that thorn goes in us and then we build up a layer and protect it. And then we build up another layer on top of it and on top of it. And now all of a sudden, all you, you still have this, this one little thorn in your arm that you could just easily. So you could have before yeah, not now. <laughs> not now, right? Not now. Cause you have 30 fucking layers, right? A, a lifetime of layers, right? Know what to do. That was so powerful for what, what you just said. Yeah. We know what to do. Take the thorn, flick that fucker out. And, and that's often why, you know, like when I sometimes coach people, I'm not a life coach, by the way. I should, I'm a great pain to say I, I hate coach that word. people. I hate I'm not that a fucking word. life coach. I don't even know what that is. Oh my God. How does anybody even say they're a fucking life coach? <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, but, I, but I do coach people. And, and, I, and, and sure. the way to coach people is often by giving them great questions, by having them question. And one of the things that you find is, especially the way that I approach things, people start defending their misery. So they'll start, yeah, 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 yeah. They start arguing for the shit pile that end, right? They'll be like, well, you don't know what it's like to be me. 
And I'm like, I get it, but do you know you're arguing for it? Do you know you're currently fighting for being resentful, for being angry, for being frustrated, for being... And when you get... And a lot of times, by the way, when I say to people, this is how you're going to get out of this. This pathway, this pathway, this pathway, and they'll say, no thanks. Because they're unwilling to deal with who they would need to be to follow that path. So they'll sink back under the fucking back into the shade again. But if you, if you create enough with them, if you empower them enough, the vast majority of people are like, I want that. that this is going to be painful for me, but I want it. I want what's on the other side of that. Then, you know, that's when people really take on, really make massive strides and transform their lives. The other side of the rainbow is so amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right? And it's available. It's available it's to everybody. So, yeah. And it's not all fucking candy canes and like, yay. Right. No, there's no but, leprechaun there. <laughs> right. But there's a fucking real, like, like a much better life than the one you're currently fucking wasting away. At. <sighs> yeah. You know, so many people just get stuck in their life, but then, you know, and I guess this would be my problem with most religions, you know, is, is that they promise them this afterlife. Yeah. You know? And they get yeah. like, this is, this is my, like, and like, I get it. Like, do your thing if it works for you. And I really understand that. Like when people are really stuck, but you don't have to be, right. Yeah. You don't have to, you don't have to be doing shit for an afterlife. Look, you, one of the things that I often disappoint people with is I say, there's no hope which people get all fucked up by, you know? And I say, hope isn't a thing. It's not a thing. It's a word we use to make ourselves feel better about the shit we're in, um, which ultimately doesn't even impact the shit you're in. And there's, the only thing that impacts the shit you're in are actions that'll move you out of it. And so I, I would, I'm, I'm unwilling to risk my life on hope. I'm just unwilling to do that. I'm just don't. It's too big a risk. God, that was really good. I'm just trying to think about it for a second. That's so good. I'm unwilling to risk my life on hope. For sure. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll, risk, I'll risk my life on fucking bold actions. Get me out there. I'll take some actions. I'll risk it. I'm okay. It's fine. And, and the funny thing is, by the way, it's human beings. You're a survival mechanism. Your ability to make it is fucking unbelievable. If you're listening to this podcast, it's the only thing you've been a hundred percent successful at. Right. You've never failed and you failed at everything else. Right. You've, you've been a bad dad sometimes I'm sure. sure. Right. Like in a moment, sure. a bad husband, a bad, sure. like you we failed at everything. The only thing we're failed. We're a hundred percent at is making it through a shit fucking experience. Look at your fucking darkest day. And yeah, here you are. Yeah. And, and you already have, and by the way, you know, you've probably had these and a lot of your listeners have had these, these periods in your life when it's dark and you'll notice as painful as it was, you somehow worked your way through, like you worked your way through it. And then there was something on the other side. And that's what I say to people. You're equipped. Don't be afraid of that shit. You're equipped. And it's always temporary. You know, it might take two months, three months, eight months, two years, but it's, it's not your life. It's that period of your life where you're working your way through things. Although, you know, you don't have to work your way through it forever in a day. You can actually explode any action and, 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 and change life in rapid and magnificent ways. Um, today, you can do it. Yeah, this has been amazing, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it's been uh, great. Great questions. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, I'm, I'm new at this podcast thing, you know, I'm, I'm, so I'm trying to, I guess I'm not too new. I'm two years in, I'm trying to, trying to do it a little better than I, than, than I did yesterday. So, yeah, it's good. That's good. Have yes. the future call you forward. That's right. That's right. I like it a little bit. I do like it. Um, tell the people, tell everyone uh, where they can reach out to you, where they can find you, social media, website, all that stuff. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm very, very active on Instagram. So I do a lot of videos on there and you get a lot of little tidbits and, you know, you can, you can follow me and not buy a fucking thing, by the way, and change your right. life. And, you know, I'm committed to that too, but I'm very active on Instagram. You'll find me on Twitter um, I have a pretty big Facebook following. Like I have, I don't know, a couple of hundred thousand people there follow me. Um, obviously, my website, you'll get updates on what I'm up to, what I'm doing. You can sign up for my mailing list there, garyjohnbishop.com. 
And, you know, every, if you want to buy a book, if you're interested in the books there, everywhere you would find a fucking book, you'll, you'll find my books. Fuck yeah, I like it. Mm-hmm. Just go, yeah, like no, no sale, right? No sale. Fuck you. If you want it, you, yeah. you can find it. Do it or don't do it. It's up to you. Do it or don't do it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, man, I really appreciate it. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this here in a second. Do you mind if we exchange information so we can stay in contact? Is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, as always, guys, you know, thank you, Gary, for being on. And uh, thank you all for listening. And I think as Gary's saying, and, and as I always like to say, go out there and find your power. You have the ability to do it. You can be amazing. Remember, it, it, I don't know how you're going to be amazing. You're not going to be amazing like me, and you're not, you might not be amazing like Gary either. But find your own unique amazingness and go out there and find it. Find that fucking power, guys. All right, have a great day.